Hello everyone, James O'Keefe here at Project Veritas updating you on our defamation lawsuit against the New York Times for reporting Project Veritas releases misleading video, part of what experts call a coordinated effort. As you recall, we sued them on October 30th. Today, Project Veritas is suing the New York Times in New York Supreme Court, and we will win. We decided to sue the New York Times. We're gonna sue the shit out of them. The New York Times has issued this remarkable motion to dismiss, begging the judge for mercy. It is truly extraordinary. We're gonna take you issue by issue here. Maggie Astor writes in this article that the Project Veritas videos were, quote, deceptive, claiming through unidentified sources with no verifiable evidence. The allegations come solely from unnamed people who speak with Project Veritas operatives in the video and whose faces are not shown. It's illegal what he was doing. You could see his face, you could hear his voice. Sued the New York Times for defamation because it's just preposterous that this reporter is saying that we relied solely on unnamed sources when that it's self-evident that we did not. That's what happened. Now let's take you through this ridiculous motion to dismiss. So the first unbelievable thing that happens in this New York Times response to our lawsuit is Maggie Astor had written in the article, she said, quote, the allegations come solely from unnamed people. But when Maggie Astor goes under oath in this affidavit and she's sitting in the hot seat under oath, she changes the facts. Now she acknowledges that, quote, many of the individuals featured in the video were unnamed. So previously in the article, she said they came solely from the unnamed. Now she's saying many of the individuals were unnamed. So she's already acknowledged that she's made a mistake. She's already printed an update. <laughs> So essentially, Maggie Astor is admitting that we did name some of our sources, making her statement in that New York Times article, quote, comes solely from unnamed sources, patently false. So we're already ahead by one. So Maggie Astor, in the first sentence of her defamatory article, writes, quote, a deceptive video. And we sue her for that. And in defense of that, Maggie Astor says, again, this is under oath, quote, there was no way for me to verify the claims that the unnamed sources purport to make in the video. So let me get this straight. You're trying to make the argument that because you can't corroborate it yourself or verify it yourself because there are sources, it is ergo deceptive. Do you understand how much of a logical fallacy that is? You're, you're a reporter, right? Do you understand how f ridiculous that is? Because you can't do the journalism. Again, we're doing something that you can't do or didn't do and we're doing what you can't do, and therefore, it's deceptive. Got it. I don't think that'll work with the judge. And to make this even more ridiculous, the New York Times says in their reply to our lawsuit, quote, even if the statements about unidentified sources were false, they are simply not defamatory. Using unnamed sources is a common journalistic practice and generally accepted. Well, isn't that rich? According to Maggie Astor, it's deceptive when we do it, but it's perfectly okay if you do it. Unnamed sources for me, but not for thee. And I think it's really amazing that you say, even if it's false. So you're admitting there that what you've reported is not true, but it doesn't matter because we can do it and you can't. Got it. So then Maggie Astor defends her sloppy journalism by making the argument that she knew, just generally, Project Veritas had a reputation, that we just had a bad reputation, and she was relying upon it. The New York Times lawyers arguing in this motion, quote, Project Veritas bills itself as a prominent independent journalist organization, but it is described on its Wikipedia page. That's right. The New York Times general counsel is relying on our description on the Wikipedia page. Now, if you actually go to Wikipedia, it actually says the following, quote, Wikipedia is not a reliable source. You, you can't make this stuff up. The New York Times General Counsel is saying 
that our reputation is given to us by our Wikipedia page, and Wikipedia is saying they're not a reliable source. Now, what's interesting is that the one place they didn't look, other than Wikipedia, was their own website, because prior to 2017, the New York Times covered us pretty fairly, but something changed in 2017. Oh, that's right. We went undercover into the New York Times, and I confronted the executive editor on the street in New York City. And then the negative coverage at the New York Times began. That seems sort of vengeful, doesn't it? That seems sort of contrary to the whole idea of without fear or favor. That just seems petty and vengeful, but not as petty as quoting Wikipedia, which itself bills itself as, quote, not a reliable source. But it gets so much more ridiculous. This, these lawyers for the New York Times say the following thing in their statement of the facts in response to our defamation lawsuit, quote, a simple Google search the New York Times lawyers are relying upon a simple Google search for Project Veritas and deceptively edited videos yields 166,000 matches. Okay, two can play at that game. A simple Google search for New York Times lies generates 384 million matches. A simple Google search for the New York Times is dishonest generates 13.5 million results. And again, I'm not making this stuff up. The New York Times lawyers actually put this in their lawsuit in response to our defamation lawsuit. They Googled us and just listed the algorithm's responses. So if you want to hold us to that standard, then I guess nothing matters anymore because you got 13.5 million results when we typed in that you're dishonest. It. Maybe we can just type in New York Times is and see the result. New York Times is a rag. New York Times is garbage. I mean, do you want to reduce yourself to this general counsel at the New York Times? Do you really want to go down this road? In fact, you know what? Let's do this. Let's, let's go up this slippery slope. When you just Google the New York Times and nothing else, it actually takes you to your correction page. And would you know that on your correction page, you have printed a hundred plus corrections in just the last two weeks. We didn't print a hundred corrections in our entire career. We haven't even printed more than a few corrections in the last decade, but here are all your corrections that we get when we Google your name. So in your statement of facts, you actually defend yourselves in New York Supreme Court by arguing about a simple Google search. Well, two can play at that game, New York Times. So then Maggie Astor defends herself in this lawsuit by saying this article, Project Veritas releases misleading, deceptive misinformation video, was just an opinion piece. New York Times says, quote, its unverifiable expressions of opinion are not actionable and cannot be defamatory. They're making the argument this was a, quote, unverifiable expression of opinion by reporter Maggie Astor in this article in the A section of the New York Times on the evening of the presidential debate, maybe that timing wasn't exactly coincidental, they're trying to say that it was a unverifiable expression of opinion, but this article was utilized by local Fox 9 television. But all of this fits the Project Veritas MO, according to Stanford researchers, who say it appears to be a coordinated disinformation campaign. It was utilized by USA Today. It was utilized by Facebook dot com, which cited the USA Today article, and millions of people, newsrooms across the country, got your A section news article, used it as evidence that our videos were deceptive and false. Millions of people got that information. 50 million people got that Facebook update saying that this information was fact-checked by independent fact-checkers cited in your article. And now you're saying it's an, quote, unverifiable expression of opinion? How dare you? How dare you mislead the people like this? How dare you put this nonsense in the legal motion, thinking that no one's gonna see it or hold you accountable? And that's not the only thing you did. The last thing you did, and perhaps the most outrageous thing, is you say, quote, even an extreme departure from professional standards does not constitute malice. You're basically admitting in your own legal motion that you've departed from professional standards. You're supposed to be the New York Times, the old gray lady, all the news that's fit to print without fear or favor. You're supposed to be the stalwart, the paragon of what it means to be a journalist. And you're saying, 
even an extreme departure from professional standards does not constitute malice, then what does? What does constitute malice? What is unethical to you? You are the manifestation of George Orwell's doublethink in 1984. The ability to believe that black is white, to know that black is white, and to forget that one has ever believed the contrary. This demands a continuous alteration of the past, made possible by the system of thought which really embraces all the rest and which is known in newspeak as doublethink. You say that we're not allowed to use anonymous sources, that anybody else who does, it's necessarily deceptive. You say that it's not malice to ex depart extremely from professional standards. You say that uh, we have a reputation for being bad just because Wikipedia says so, and Wikipedia says they're not a reliable source. You are quite literally doing what Orwell described, to tell deliberate lies while genuinely believing in them, to forget any fact that has become inconvenient, and then when it becomes necessary again, to draw it black from oblivion for just so long as it is needed, to deny the existence of objective reality, and all the while to take account of the reality which one denies, even in using the word doublethink. It is necessary to exercise doublethink, for in using the word, one admits that one is tampering with reality. That's what you're doing, Maggie Astor. And no one ever, ever has had the will or the balls to hold you accountable. But we will. By the way, this lawsuit is going to cost us so much money, probably more than a million dollars. But we're going to take you through every single motion. We're going to show you every ludicrous argument, every double-think statement, every absurdity, every logical fallacy. We're not going to let democracy die in darkness. We're going to show people how scummy you are, how contradictory you are how your own investigative reporters say one thing and then say the exact opposite thing under oath. And you know what? How many other people get railroaded by you? How many other people don't have the means, the resources, or the will to hold you accountable? But we will. We're going to show you every deposition, every motion, every sentence. We are going to show the American people what it is that you do and how it is that you do it. And mark my words, right now, as we speak, we have insiders coming to us from your organization, from other media organizations, and from every big tech company. It's going to be like the 4th of July, all throughout 2021. We are going to put you on blast. Even if I have to sell this suit, sell my watch, I'm not going to settle. We're taking you all the way to the very end.